Hello, everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about the phylum of worms called Lemurtia, commonly referred to as ribbon worms. Now, Lemurtians are bilaterally symmetrical animals. They are triple blastic in their embryogenesis, and recent research has proven that these worms are actually true coelomates. Um, they are protosomes, so their anus develops first after gastrulation, and they possess a closed circulatory system with a simple nervous system. And the main uh, thing about these guys is uh, their main monophyletic trait is that they feed using a proboscis, which is a, which is a, a tube that they invert, evert, uh, in order to uh, attach to prey. And depending on how this uh, proboscis is um, structured, um, will define whether or not it is in one of these two different classes the Paleoneomertia and the Neonemertia. Now, Nemertians exhibit both free living and parasitic lifestyles. They are gonochoristic, meaning that they possess, um, they have both male and female individuals, and fertilization for these guys is external, although there are some species that do exhibit simultaneous hermaphroditism. The image uh, we see here is a crab that has died after being infested with a species of Demertian called Carcinomutes carcinophilia. This species of worm, as an adult, lays its eggs over the eggs of the uh, infected crab. Um, scores, or if not hundreds, of female worms will be um, laying their eggs over these guys, and males will also kind of join in and start fertilizing them in what they call uh, they call it um, a mucus mass. Um, uh, these eggs hatch uh, and the larvae will begin to devour the gonads and the, um, the reproductive organs of this crab, uh, uh, leading to sterilization, if not death. These guys exhibit uh, bilateral symmetry. They are dorsoventrally flattened most times, but there are some species that appear tube-like. Um, and these guys are unsegmented, a characteristic that help the helps distinguish them from flatworms, the platyhelminthes, um, and they do have a cephalized region, usually distinguished by the mouth and or proboscis openings. Um, they can also be very variable in size. Some are as small as two millimeters, and the largest ones can reach up to 30 millimeters, actually. The digestive systems of nematerians is very simple in that it is a single longitudinal tube. The mouth may or may not share an opening with the proboscis. They do possess a foregrip called the stromodium. Their intestinal tract may have flaps called diverticulata to aid in nutrient absorption. Um, people can also have these as well as other mammals. They're usually like folded intestines. Food is moved throughout the body, uh, throughout the gut, um, through ciliated cells that all beat back and forth. And um, they use pepsin to digest most of their food particles as well. Um, one thing that these guys share with cemented worms, the annelids, is that they both have closed circulatory system. Oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse through the general body surface and into a thin uh, membranous wall space called the lacuna. Adjacent to these walls are the blood vessels, which do the job of circulating the blood around the body. Some species are even known to have hemoglobin circulating with their blood. Since there is no heart to circulate the blood, uh, general body movement uh, locomotion is what gets the blood flowing through these guys. Now for the nervous system, they have a very simple nervous system. Being cephalic, there is a clear concentration of nervous tissue around the head region with um, a large ganglia consi consisting of four lobes all surrounding the animal's proboscis. Unlike most other invertebrates, these guys uh, position their, probos uh, their ganglia around the proboscis. Most other invertebrates position it around the stomach region. They can have anywhere from two to several hundred ocelli, and they mostly communicate through chemosensory signals. So they have highly specialized cephalic slits with lots of nerve tissue um, on the front of their head. Um, this helps them communicate with you know, males and females during reproduction, um, mostly for that. 
Now, the main defining characteristics of Manda Nimurtia is their proboscis. This is a blind tube that inverts itself to grab onto um, or stab it or stab or sting prey. Um, sp some species will even inject uh, neurotoxins um, using the proboscis. Um, some Nemertia contain a nail-like structure called a stylet, which is the piece that is used to pierce their prey. And um, because of the nature of the stylet, they will often be broken or lost. Um, so they do regularly need to be replaced. Um, so most of the Nemertia that have stylets will have reservoirs of extra stylets. Um, not many, but just in case they lose them. And here I have a quick video that will show you what it looks like when the proboscis is, is eject, ejected. It is like very long and very sticky in this species. And these guys don't have stylets, but they primarily will use it probably to attach to a food or prey. Kind of gross, kind of cool. Now to the phylogeny of Nemertians. The first main class is the Paleo Nemertia. These guys do not have stylets with their proboscises. They have a separate mouth hole from their proboscis pore as well. They, last, they lack most cerebral organs and ocelli. And these guys primarily inhabit marine or uh, littoral environments. They're not the most exciting of the ribbon worms, but this class does have some of the largest species, including the worms seen here. And on the cover, this is a Tubulanus superbus. Now in the class Neonimertia, we start to see some of the more specialized features uh, shine. Um, first of all, they all um, share a mouth opening with the proboscis pore. Um, the first class we're gonna talk about is the Poplonimertia. Um, these are the ones that typically have stylets with them. Um, and the proboscis is armed with distinct stylets um, that are all morphologically different depending on the species and habitat that they live in. And here I have an image of a couple of different styles of stylets that uh, these guys can carry. Um, these are also usually parasitic to other invertebrates. Now the second subclass is the Caludiophora. These guys also, uh, these guys don't have um, armed proboscises, so no stylets, but they are distinguished by the hat-shaped free-swimming pallidium that they have when they're in their larval stage. Um, here I have an image of what it looks like. The larval nimertia will sit inside of the um, the pallidium until it's like ready to get out. It'll eat its way and completely consume this pallidium before going off to being a free swimming larvae. So now I have a couple of questions just to make sure that you all were paying attention. Um, my first one is how does blood circulate through nimertians if they don't have a heart? My second question, what major synapomorphies help distinguish between the two subclasses, the Hoplonimertia and the Pallidiophora? Here I have just some of my citations. Thank you all for um, coming to my video. Have a good day.